In PCC EHR, you can post charges and queue up a claim in seconds. Elvis has left the building. Elvis? Yeah, little Elvis. Uh, his mom brought him in with a sore throat. Uh, Dr. Williams just saw him. Okay, the patient has left the building. Let's post the charges for that encounter. Wait, uh, first off, how do I know that an appointment is ready to be posted? Right here on the schedule screen, I can see the billing status for all of this day's appointments. Okay, so this Elvis Flintstone encounter is ready to post. How does PCC EHR know that? Good question. Ready to post means the clinician reviewed the electronic encounter form for that visit, approved the diagnoses and procedures, and clicked Make Ready for Billing. Oh, good. A and I can see that they signed the visit, too. That's right. So you can know the clinician is done and the appointment is ready to post. Just click on Ready to Post. Okay. PCC EHR opened a post charges window. Uh, I've got some navigation anchors over here on the left. It looks like there's lots of patient and encounter details I can use. Uh, but, Nate, you said I can post charges in just a few seconds. Really? Okay, let's do this quickly once. Click on the Post Charges Navigation button. I click on Post Charges. I see Appointment Information and then Diagnoses and Procedures. Looks like your clinician linked everything appropriately. Yes, and let's pretend these charges all look perfect to me. Oh, I can even see the primary insurance that will be billed right here on the Procedures component. Okay, so I move down. Uh, there's no special claim information I need to enter for this encounter. Uh, what about copay? It looks like your front desk didn't collect the copay during check-in, so there's no payment, so the account has a $15 balance. And I just click Save and Post? That's right, Save and Post. And you've just posted the charges and queued up a claim. Well, that was easy. Uh, what, what if I need to um, check insurance eligibility first or uh, check something on the chart note as I post or enter an admin fee or, or fix diagnosis linking or switch to a different billing provider or enter a payment for a past due balance? Ah, uh, Douglas, you've just now discovered that sometimes posting charges for a visit is complex. Yeah. Uh, can, can we go in again, please? Absolutely. You walk through it and I'll stop you if you miss something. Okay. I'm going to post uh, this appointment. Wait, wait, why is Dr. Williams' name in orange? Because that chart needs to be reviewed and co-signed by Dr. Williams. Okay, I'll, I'll skip that one then, um, and I'll click Ready to Post on Abigail Addington's appointment. So when this post charges screen opens, I land on a patient details ribbon with some navigation buttons? That's right. Your practice can customize the patient details ribbon to add whatever you might need as you post charges. Cool. So insurance eligibility, uh, the patient's policies, and account balances. Uh, I can even look up the details for past balances with this flip-down arrow. I've used these tools before. Right. Many practices put these tools on the patient check-in screen. If the front desk scanned a new insurance card, if there's some other form of paperwork for this encounter, you'll see that here, too. Great. Hey, it looks like I can navigate to the patient's chart history with the first navigation button. Yep, sometimes billers need to check previous visits to determine what codes to use when they bill. And when I'm ready to post the charges, I click Post Charges. Okay, so if Dr. Williams didn't actually see this patient and it was Dr. Crusher, I could change that right here. And um, now I want to pretend that something's wrong with these diagnoses and procedures. Like they haven't been linked? Right. Uh, how do I fix linking? One quick way is here on the right-hand side of the Diagnoses component. Okay, yeah, I can click All, uh, or None, or Select, and then pick which procedures this diagnosis is linked to. Right. Or you could do it right down here on the Procedures component. Oh, neat. So just pick which diags will be going with this procedure. I, I was about to ask, can I set which diagnosis is primary for a procedure? Yes. Just click and drag these little handles to change the order of the diagnoses. Okay. So let me think what else I might need as a biller at a pediatric practice. I can fix the units. That's good for when they get immunization admins or supplies wrong. 
Um, I can switch the responsible party, like to a secondary insurance. Or self-pay. Great. Um, that's the copay amount, but I, I see I could change that if it was listed wrong for some reason. Oh, wait. What about um, modifiers? You mean that sometimes you have to add a modified code, like a dash 25? Just click on the pull-down menu. There it is. Okay, uh, listen, can I add a new charge here? Of course you can. You're the biller. You've got a search box for adding any billing diagnosis here and a search box for adding any procedure code here. Now, I, I know that for most visits, I wouldn't add anything because the doctor charted the visit, but sometimes they get something wrong or I need to add an administration fee or a forms fee, something like that. Perfect. Just keep in mind that items you add here are not being charted on the patient's clinical record. These are the build codes, not the charted diagnoses or clinical procedures. You mentioned that. It reminds me, for a really complex visit, I really wish I could just get that chart note open. Just put the chart note right here next to this screen. Oh, you totally can. Just click Visit Note. What? Oh, that's really cool. Uh, the chart note doesn't fit in our little video screen very well, but I will totally use this. Okay, next. I love that I can add other claim information here. I've got that EPSDT pull down, a uh, prior authorization. Uh, I also see I can enter accident information for when that's needed. Oh, and right at the top, I can switch the billing provider. That's right. One doctor may be the rendering provider billed out under a different doctor. Okay, just payments left. Hey, they didn't pay their copay, and they've got an outstanding balance. Yes, but they left you this check. Phew, okay. I pick check. Oh, and it enters the expected amount for me automatically. Great, I don't have to type that. Uh, it knows how much to apply to today's visit, but I can change that. Hey, I, I notice as I do all this, it updates the ledger up here. That's right. You can see the results of the payment. It's not entered yet. This is what will be entered when you click Save and Post for this visit. I am done. Well, you might be done. What do you mean? Well, did you need a receipt? Oh, I forgot. Uh, uh, can I go back in and get a receipt? Aha! Yes, I can! Now I'm really done. Hopefully. What do you mean? Well, Dr. Williams might pop open that chart later tonight and add a diagnosis or procedure. Uh, I hate that. Um, how, how, how do we make sure we catch it when a clinician adds additional things? No problem. If anyone adds to the chart note, this posted status will switch to new items. Oh, can, can I just add those to the claim? Yes, just click to open it up and you can review what was added. Okay, I'll, I'll pretend this new diagnosis and procedure are totally normal and correct. And click Save and Post again. Also, you don't just have to catch new items here on the schedule screen. You can run a Visits by Billing status report in the PCC EHR report library, or find these new items on Daily Check or other practice management reports. Okay, uh, I think I have one last question. Um, how do I post charges for a visit that doesn't have an appointment in PCC EHR, like hospital charges with an admit and discharge date? And how do I edit those charges so they go to a different payer and rebatch a claim? And also, when it's rejected, how do I go back and... Douglas, that's not one more question. All of those functions can be completed in the practice management window. We've got how-to guides online, and your client advocate can walk you through it. Also, PCC EHR is adding all of that functionality to this interface in an upcoming release.